And now to party politics, presidential flag bearer of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, has continued consultation with party leaders on who will be his running mate in the party's successful outing in the coming 2023 general elections. Most recent of the consultation was the one held with governors of Sokoto State, Amino Tambuala in Abuja. Shortly after the meeting, Chairman PDP Governors Forum, Amino Tambo, said the meeting was held uh, on the way forward to arriving at who will be the running mate to the former vice president. Tambo said the meeting was in continuation of the party's consultation leading to the 2023 election. Abubakar will also meet the party's board of trustees on Monday for deliberations on the matter. Adewale Adebayo has emerged as the presidential candidate of Social Democratic Party SDP for the forthcoming 2023 general elections. The chairman, uh, SDP Electoral Committee, Dr. Umar Ado, declared him the flag bearer of the party after it polled 1,526 votes out of 1,710 accredited delegates at the SDP National Convention presidential primaries held at the International Conference Center. Abuja. Adebayo, while giving his acceptance speech, said his emergence exemplifies social justice in Nigeria, stating that Nigerians would enjoy full dividends of democracy if voted as the next president. He however urged Nigerians to get their permanent voter cards and join SDP to vote out bad leaders in the country. Your money is in the pockets of APC and PDP. Yeah. Your money is not in China. Your money is not in the central bank. Your money is in their pocket. We will come out and show to the Nigerian people that food, water, light, housing, education, medical care, they are not prayer points. They are your rights. No one is allowed to call himself president of hungry people. The convention also witnessed twirling of newly elected National Party officials of the party with Shegun Gabama as the national chairman and Dr. Olu Ola Aguloye as the national secretary of the party. Still a party politics for a moment, the chief security officer of the former, and former to the former head of state, General Sani Abacha, Major Hamza Al Mustafa, retired, has emerged as 2023 presidential flag bearer for the Action Alliance AA. The aide of the late military leader contested the presidential primary with another aspirant, Samson Odupita, following the withdrawal of two others, Mrs. Felix Osakwe and Tede Kilani, who pledged the support. Al Mustafa. A retired, the retired major polled 506 votes to defeat Odupita, his opponent, who got 215. The party's national chairman, Kenneth Odeza, had while addressing the delegates sent 842 delegates were accredited to elect the four flag bearers using the option A4. Our determination will give a level playing ground to eligible aspirants. Our NDPC adopted a strategy tilting towards enhancing the openness, transparency, and credibility of the process. And we are willing to mentor other political parties who might be willing to deepen their party internal democracy upon request. Unlike other political parties, we are altruistic in our disposition as a party. The party flag bearer, Al Mustafa, said his experience as a military officer for 35 years while working with Abacha would enable him tackle the nation's embarrassing security challenges. In this country, there are numerous examples that is open for leadership to go into laboratory and bring out examples of formulas that will bring us out of where we are. Any person who comes with rhetorics, any person who in his conduct 
in his sayings or in his traces, leaves traces of dishonesty, of corruption, of deceit, is such a person that should never be trusted with power. Now, Kane De Shogunle, a former Commissioner of Finance in Ogun State, has been elected as governorship candidate of the Labour Party. He emerged through affirmation by the 100 delegates from the 20 local government areas of the state as the second aspirant, Boyega Ijaola, was conspicuously absent from the exercises, an event held at the Niger Labour Congress State Secretariat in Abiyokuta, the state capital. In his acceptance speech, the governorship candidate promised purposeful leadership with a great sense of responsibility towards real development of the state and security, human capital development and employment generation as a vocal point of his administration. The main thrust of our government will be human capital development. We know we have abundant talent, energy, and enthusiasm in Ogun State. We have people who are displayed at all times, nationally and internationally, that they have performed. There is no area of human endeavor in the world today that you will not see an Ogun State indigenous excelling. Is it music? Is it boxing? Is it architecture? Is it accounting? Is it engineering? We are all everywhere. How can we bring all of these people, like they do in Israel, to come and help us develop our state? The Independent National Electoral Commission has directed all registered political parties in Oyo State to submit the list of their candidates for the national elections before Friday, 17th June 2023. Recall that all primaries for the nomination of candidates ends Thursday, 9th June 2022. The resident electoral commission of the state, Barista Mathieu Boke, in a statement made available to a correspondent, said uploading of names of candidates for the list of candidates for the state electronic will commence as from July 1st to 15th, 2022, as stated on the timetable as scheduled of activities for the 2023 general elections. He urged all political parties to upload details of their candidates for each constituency to INEC candidates nomination portal as the portal will automatically shut down as from 6 p.m. Friday 17th June 2022 for national election and Friday 15th July 2022 for the state election. Aboke emphasized that only candidates that emerged from Democratic part primaries as provided from or for by section 84 of the Electoral Act shall be submitted to the commission. He said the list of candidates for the presidential and governorship candidates must be accompanied by the names of their running mates accordingly. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reiterated commitment to ensure that all eligible citizens are given opportunity to register for the permanent voter card PVCs ahead of the forthcoming general elections. Chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, gave the assurance at a meeting with the resident electoral commissioners, R. Rex, in Abuja Thursday. Yakubu said the commission is putting up measures to reduce the number of prospective registrants as the deadline for voters' registration exercise approaches. He rather appeared to Nigerians to be patient with the commission as a strive to serve better, assuring that no citizen will be left out unregistered before the deadlines given by INEC. However, as the deadline for the suspension of the current exercise approaches, the Commission has received reports of a surge in, a number of in the number of prospective registrants that daily throng our state and local government area offices, as well as designated centers across the country. I wish to reassure Nigerians that the Commission remains committed to ensuring that all citizens who register, or those who wish to register, are given the opportunity to do so. This is one of the reasons why this meeting has been convened. Already, some of the resident electoral commissioners have requested for more voter registration machines to ease the congestion. 
The INEC chairman also stressed the need for political parties to upload details of their candidates for each constituency to the INEC candidate nomination portal, ICNP, before the deadlines. He said the portal will automatically shut down at 6 p.m. on Friday, June 17, 2022, for national elections, and Friday, July 15, 2022, for the state elections. Turning to the nomination of candidates by political parties, for the 2023 general election, all primaries end today, Thursday, 9th June 2022. For the next one week from tomorrow, 10th June 2022, all political parties are required to submit their list of candidates for national elections, presidential and vice presidential candidates, as well as senatorial and House of Representatives candidates latest by Friday, 17th June 2022. Chief Education of the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, Sadna Pandey, says education suffered from the COVID-19 pandemic and recovery will remain protracted with potential intergenerational impact if government and stakeholders in the education sector did not confront the challenges with urgency. Pandey made this known at the Transforming, Transforming Education Summit in Abuja Thursday. She said the pandemic has worsened the fragility of the country's education system, which was already struggling with poor access to quality learning, adding that frequent attacks in schools, which has also resorted to prolonged school closures. Pandey Reva said aim of the summit is to mitigate the education impact and build the opportunities to expand access to quality learning and to secure the future of current and uh, future generations. are because of poor quality teaching and learning. It is an economic, social, and moral failure when parents invest in 12 years of schooling for their children only to help them emerge as functionally illiterate in the moment. This we must change. It must be our collective preoccupation for the years to come. And we know what works. I'm looking at my uh, director of FME, who we work very closely with. We have the answers. Strong foundations to access to quality ECE and foundation literacy and literacy. Executive Secretary of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund, Sonny Chono, said there is need to harness all potential resources towards investing into education sector. The Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, also reiterated need to transform the country's education sector. Whoever sees our education, they will strongly believe that the earlier we transform it, the better uh, for us as a country. Because uh, today, if you look at the requirements for applying for any job globally, you will discover there are more of soft skills, that, but they are absent in our education today. Critical thinking, collaborative skills, uh, complex problem solving, presentation skills, project management, and many more. Benue State Internal Revenue Service, BIRS, has sealed the administrative offices of Just Electricity Distribution Company, JEDC, and Dangote Cement Company, DCC, Boko, for refusal to pay up their taxes after due assessment by the company. Chairman, Benue State Internal Revenue Service, BIRS, Chief Mrs. Mimi Zappi, Rubiwi, led an enforcement team in person to a court order granted by Justice T. Aoguchi of the Benue State High Court. 
RBB said it became necessary after the two organizations failed to comply to their tax obligations on pay payee with Odin talks and levies amount into over 400 million naira and over 200 million naira for the JEDC and DCC respectively. After locking up the offices of both companies in Makwadi and Boko, the chairman said the service has sent demand notice to the company and followed up with reminders that contained in sections 97 and 58 of the Personal Income Tax Act PETA uh, 2011 as amended. The chairman, Areva, said this action became necessary after exhausting all forms of diplomacy and giving the affected companies ample time to comply. The Imo State Council of Traditional Rulers has presented a cheque of 1 million naira each to 11 widows of late traditional rulers in the state. Our correspondent reports that the beneficiaries included three widows of late traditional rulers killed by gunmen at the Njaba local government area headquarters in October last year. It will be recalled that the deceased persons were among traditional rulers, security agents, and some politicians who were attacked during the meeting in the state. You know where the state capital, chairman, Imo State Traditional Council, Aze Manuel KK, who also doubles as a traditional ruler of Maifike or Lusen, the gesture was part of traditional rights approved by the council to assist widows of late traditional rulers. So we used to have right, marital right that we used to give to the uh, wife so that he can, she can cope with it for some while before getting herself normal again. Uh, we always uh, used to release over one million plus other things, you know, plus some other things, provisions, and uh, some other rights that we used to give them in their spot in the, our office generally. On the forth 2023 general election in the country, the monarch who advised Nigerians to elect credible candidates prayed for peaceful electioneering process. I'm not God. God knows the best. God has to choose the best. But what I know is all of them happen to be our subject. That's a good. They are progressing. But uh, during the voting period, when we reach the bridge, we shall know how to cross it.